Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name's Josh. Uh, we're here for a quick one today, I think. I always say that, it's never quick, but uh, we're gonna be covering the uh, Jonathan and Anna Sakona Jolie video. They did a live on Instagram the other day. I haven't even pressed play, but I've had like 20 people say, have you seen this? And we gotta watch it, watch it. You gotta watch it, you gotta dissect it, you gotta talk about it. Um, we are gonna talk a little bit about Jonathan Jolie and the idea of Munchausen by proxy. I have to research a little bit more about exactly what it is. But I've been getting, I've been, I've been sort of understanding what it is and it's crazy. And so I'm just trying to figure it out. But before I get into that, I want to watch this video with you and talk about what it means. What, it, what are they talking about? What's going on? Um, it's a really important topic in the, the world that we live in today. This is a very divided issue. The transgender community versus, you know, affecting your kids in a certain way because it, you know, a lot of people are now making the comparison now Jonathan Jolie is saying he just he struggled with that stuff for his entire life and it seems like if that's the case you know and now he gets to come out and be his true self that's great but at the same time it feels like there might be something to be said for him living vicariously through his child right and so I don't know if they cover that in this video but we're gonna get to it because there's a, this is you know I'm a dad he's a dad at the core of this is this issue of being parents in this idea of this world of influencers. And so that's kind of what we have to keep talking about. But before we get to that, you know we gotta dance for the Patreons and throw a dart, right? You know I do that, it's what I do here. So let's just do this, let's get it over with, all right? Yeah, baby. <laughs> Sarah Kirkpatrick. I'm going to go for the old uh, 20 right here. Oh, Sarah wins a t-shirt. Boom. I'm not so bad at the start thing. I mean, I have not missed yet in the last couple of videos. So boom. So I have to say to that boom and more dancing. Yeah, baby. Roni loves that chair. All right, Angie Campbell, this one's for you. Oh, sorry, just a sticker. I was, it's just, the wind took it. Let's do it. Now, I've done a couple of videos on the Sakuna Jolies. I don't like them. They're just, they're cocky. And, you know, be cocky, it's fine. But something tells me, my gut tells me, and you guys know I trust my gut, uh, they don't have a marriage. They're, this is a family that is together for the business, right? It's, all these, a lot of these family vloggers have kept their marriages going, not for the kids. You know, a lot of people say, well, we're together for the kids. Let's stay together for the kids. These people stay together for the money. <laughs> Ace family, the whole nine yards, LeBrant's. Most of them, okay? I'm not saying all of them. I actually honestly believe the eight passengers and a lot of the Mormon families are together because that's the Mormon way. But I think these people, something's weird. So let's get into this video and, and talk about it. I think of the two, she's the most cocky, but we'll see. Hello and welcome to a live. Is this your first live? This is my first live. Is it actually? On Instagram. Yeah, my first live on Instagram. I think wow. I once did a live on TikTok. Wow, Jonathan. Wow, nice shirt. What does it say? Something the Botox? 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 Bollocks? I don't know what their shirt's a, a dog. Um, and then I gave up. Did you actually? Did you really? When I did one live on TikTok. This okay. Gives a shit, dude. Chill with the watch strap from Target. The very one, was it? I've done two lives on TikTok. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, we've got it established. Awesome. Love it. Love to see it. Let's move on, please. <laughs> no. Are mom jeans back? Cool. Did, um, I did a live on TikTok once, and then I was like, this is just, it's too, it's too much, because I like TikTok for the way we create the video. You are 41, so. <laughs> <laughs> see, 41, I'm 41. Damn it. 
It is too much for you. I don't need that. But you always do the live thing here, and I was thinking, you know what? I want to have to edit this, you know? But we figured, you know, after being this offline for like... What is she doing? I think she thinks this is OnlyFans. It's not. It's Instagram, lady. Chill. Three or four days, I figure. I know I put the... You... Thank you very, very much. I know I put that up yesterday. Um, you know... So he's just... He says he... I have not watched their their tiktok but he basically just tells everybody f off let me live my life and let my son live his life eduardo and all this stuff and at some point you know as a dad sure i sort of get that if eduardo is actually experiencing this legitimately then i'd be like yeah let my son be my son but the problem is and the world knows this is that you're exploiting it you're making a desmond is amazing out of eduardo eduardo can be going through these things and i'm not going to call them struggles they could be his identities for sure but you don't have to exploit them online you don't if they say that, oh, yeah, we lose subscribers, they still have many advertisers advertising with them. They they still are very wealthy. They do videos. They still only do this. So, sorry. That's not, I'm not going to, it's not going to fly here on this channel. Sorry. Funny story. Funny story. Jonathan got that idea from me because that was in my soundtrack of, like, my music that I was playing. Uh, soundtrack was saying F you and you just okay because I think it's a naughty's track right and I listen oh, is to naughty's pop oh yeah. I thought it was a new song <laughs> no oh, <laughs> I don't ever remember that song that's like from my they're like he doesn't like when she touches him it's weird eh yeah, I oh, I don't yeah. Like that song. it's a great song it's Lily Allen but we had an idea I know can okay let's let's please are you okay yeah, Jessica, Jessica Calvin. Are you okay? Do you yeah. need to like? <laughs> She's been condescending now. I don't know what's happening here. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know what time. About. Anyway, their accents are really thick. I rarely know what they're saying. Pipe with some slippers or something. <laughs> Lily Allen. Yeah. Please allow these people to educate you on who Lily Allen is, because I'm actually like she my says, mind uh, is. Okay. Yeah, but and she's she not a cook. cook. No, she's not a cook. You can always cook Lily Allen food. That's Rachel. Oh my God. Allen. Oh, her sister or something, isn't no, it? No, they're different people. <laughs> Jonathan, how would you not know who Lily Allen is? Like, I'm actually very concerned. Who's Lily Allen? I don't even know. I'm Googling it now. Who's Lily Allen? She's a weird haircut here. Is she a singer? Lily Allen. Married the dude from, uh, the dude. Stranger Things star guy. She looks like a person in normal. Well, okay. There's a picture of her nipples. That's nice. Why are you going to wear a shirt? Okay. Whatever. Let's uh, let's continue to talk about this. Well, I, 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 do know know. I do you know now. I do know now. Do you know what she looks like? Do you know any of her other songs? We need to go on a deep dive deep of dive. Lily Allen. That's what she said. <laughs> Music because okay. this is not okay. I'm is it all like that? Grandpa. Is it yes. All... Oh, that's yes. good. Like funky. Do you know fun. what country she's from? Even England. Yes. Thank you. Thank God. I was gonna say Ireland because that's where Rachel Allen's from. But then I was like, Yes. Yeah, so how did they be sisters? What the f? Get to the what the hell? Hers. Whatever. I don't know. Just said. Don't know. Anyway, I can't believe to watch this whole shit. You're welcome. I'm scrubbing. Because I go like, yeah. I'm just, just, just fuck it. Like, I'm just like, Yeah, like, I think we it. need to be somewhere in the middle. Yeah. We want to balance it. But exactly, okay. that's what so I mean. So maybe, maybe all four of our kids are going to be perfectly mm. balanced. Have you ever... Doubt it. Not if they're being raised by you, weirdos. Highly doubt it. No, that is a bad... <laughs> I mean, I, obviously you want to be somewhat similar. Anyway, this isn't what our... No, thank a, God. A Get on to the so shit. We're sitting outside eating sushi, <laughs> and um, and Anna was talking to me, and I was like, you yeah, know, Jesus, I was like, that's a really interesting point of view about because uh, the thing is, so many people say so much shit about us, right? Well, I mean, is any of it justified? Yeah, it is. People calling you out because you are using your child for clout. Even take away the whole identity issues. Take away all that stuff. You exploit your kids for money. The end. And that's the conversation. And we never really, like, respond to it, you know, because... You respond to it all the time. You told your kid, what do you have to say? And he, your little kid said, F you. And you laughed at it. That's great. You know, and you respond to it all the time. 
we, we've been here for 14 years making internet videos and we've heard it all. Like literally heard everything that could ever be said about us. We've heard it. And we set up the No Kids Allowed thing and we were like, oh yeah, we'll use this format to kind of voice our opinion on things and talk. And, and I think the episodes we did do were brilliant, you know, but... That's okay. <laughs> We have four children and you know it's a lot it's a lot of effort to do it so is he saying they don't do that very much anymore and we don't really want to have loads of people coming to the house to help us make stuff and all that and then we we're just sitting outside chatting and i was like that's why we need a voice that's what we need to, to talk and i was like why don't we just do like jump on a live and then maybe this could be <laughs> no kids or something like that you just go live yeah you know uh, I, they're admitting a couple things here but at the same time this is their job I mean, I feel like, um, I'm, I hate, I'm not trying to float my boat, but I'm like a podcast and a video a day for me. I could easily do that and spend tons of time with my kids. I do it. These people have no jobs. I also have a full-time job and I'm like, just get better or hire it. He's like, we don't want people coming to the house. You don't have to have people come to your house. So you can hire it out. The problem is, is that people that they that do videos like this, they do a lot of shit on camera. Right. And those who are have to get that footage to create the stuff they will see things about them that they don't want the rest of the world to see the problem is that you get to a glimpse and those people can't be they, they, youtube people can't trust anybody that's just the way it is there's if you hire an outside editor like this thing going on with um what's his name the other jeffrey star james charles he had this editor like that girl's probably got more tea than anybody knows because she edited his videos could you imagine the things that she knows and has seen so that's why they don't want to do it. I mean, it's very relatively affordable to do this, but they don't want to do it for some reason. But tell them the story you told me. Um, okay. Story of Eduardo. <laughs> so I've said this before, I think, in like YouTube video, like on vlogs. Um, I probably have referenced it before on Insta stories. The fact that I don't like addressing this because mm. I don't feel like it should, I don't mm. think it should need to be addressed. Exactly. So it, that's why I kind of... Are they talking about just Eduardo and the dresses and the makeup and all that stuff? Because you don't need to address it, but you do need to address it. Because you're putting it out there in the public. You, you, guys have, you guys have made yourselves public figures. You said 14 years you've been doing this. You've been on the news. You've done tons of videos. you made tons of money. You're in the public sphere. So yes, all these vloggers, they come up like, I don't think I have to answer your questions. These people are the re who watch you are the reason you make money. I don't get the privilege on one side. They're one side they want you to consume everything and buy all the products that they advertise. On the other side, they're like, you know, don't don't ask us questions. You don't get to no, we don't, we don't, that's our life. I mean, the logic, the 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 chasms at which they have to jump over logic is mind-blowing. It's actually quite impressive. It irritates me to even address it in the first place, but now I kind of understand that obviously not all of you are going to understand. Like, not all of you are going to be in the same situation. Not all of you are going to have the same, um, like, the same children as... I mean, Wait, no, no one has the same children as us, but What the hell? No one Wait. has the same... Jonathan's like, um, please say things better. Like experiences, mm. and so I guess some people will obviously everybody has an opinion, right? But I think sometimes the opinion can be formed from like things that other people have said about us or things that just aren't even true, but to you they're true because you heard them from like X, Y, and Z, you know. Mm. But we don't tend to not give our opinions on stuff because we don't want to cause drama, we don't want to cause any. <laughs> But then do F you videos. Yeah, I get it. You don't want to cause drama. This is like Jess fam. I don't like drama, but I really like drama. Like, 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 I totally don't like drama and stuff. But like, but this one girl looked at me different at Target once and I like busted her lips open. Like, 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 you know, like, 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 you know? I just, you guys know I hate drama, right? And then so when I get in, so when I get into drama, you know it's out of the, like, totes out of character, right? When you have to say the thing, it's not the thing. 14 years of lessons learned. <laughs> you know what exactly. I mean? But then sometimes that can backfire because then mm. if you don't know it from us, you're learning it from other sources that aren't mm. reliable. And so the whole topic 
about Eduardo, I find really uncomfortable to address because I, I just, again, I just feel like it shouldn't even have to be addressed. Mm. He is who he is. He's perfect the way he is. Like, there's nothing wrong with him. There's no Nobody says that. Nobody's saying, and you guys are projecting this. What people are saying is that, why are you exploiting this for views? Just let Eduardo be Eduardo. You don't have to put it on TikTok. What if in the end, Eduardo just says, this was a phase I went through. I liked dresses and stuff like that. And in 10 years, when he's a teenager, goes to high school and this stuff's on the internet forever. Okay. Let's say he grows out of this phase. Okay. Um, the issue is, is that you're putting the things, and this is the issue for all family vloggers, not just kids who go through identity issues, is the privacy concerns. You do not have your child's permission or consent to do this because they cannot give informed consent. It's all about informed consent here. Everybody, oh yeah, they their consent. They always talk about consent, but informed consent. Remember the video we did with Dr. Kirk? Children cannot give informed consent because they cannot make an informed decision based on the outcomes. Adults can't even really do it, but we do it because we, you know, we can weigh the consequences and say, I think this might happen this way, but a kid can't be like, well, in 20 years, you know, I think I'll look back and be cool with that. They don't, they can't cognitively dissent. They cannot consent. That's the problem. So they're projecting everybody's like, oh, Eduardo's not this way. It's not this way. It's that maybe Eduardo is this way, but you guys completely and absolutely exploit it. And I think a lot of people are, are pointing out on purpose is that now Eduardo became the star and it feels like your other kids are like, do you have other kids? And so you, something hit for you, an algorithm hit, and that's why people are complaining. And for good reason, because it's true. There's not even anything massively different about it. it's like society has deemed it different but to me i view him as the same as every other child of mine right so well your content doesn't reflect that i think it's what a lot of people would say right we've been asked quite a few times and i've been asked personally please can you address the whole situation with eduardo and i just something inside me is like mm, no like why should mm. we why is nobody asking us to address Amelia or Andrea or because what you're doing and what Eduardo is doing and if it's true what Jonathan talked about earlier I have to dig into that a little bit more and understand a little bit better if Jonathan struggled with his identity growing up too and all that stuff it feels like that you this is a Munchausen by proxy type of situation where it is projection onto a child and children are very susceptible to to be pushed to directions that we can push them, right? And that's so true with religion, with identity, with everything. And this does happen. The issue is that the world is is wrapped up in this topic right now because there are parents who are using it for their own sad fishing or for their own clout for whatever reason. And it's pretty apparent here. Now, is it genuine? I'm sure. But again, you just don't have to do it. The problem is you don't have to. Yeah, you know, so that was my like first thing. Um, I think if we do have to do this, we do have to address it. All I will say is that Eduardo is Eduardo, first of all. He has always been the way he is. When I got pregnant with a boy and I found out it was a boy, um, similarly to all of my children, I did not know who he was mm. going to be when he came out. So of course, when you, when you find out that you're pregnant with a boy, you usually... Is he wearing tights? And I got to address that. He was wearing like TikTok tights in a video at one point. He's with his like budgie smuggling hanging out in the front. Like he had his, the package for the world to see. What is going on? Blue clothes or you buy... In my case, I got a lot of gray clothes, but you know. <laughs> you buy like just blue things, you you decorate a certain way. You just do what's like, I mean, well, you think, oh, the norm, right? You're a son of a gun, you're a little, little Yeah, guy, like. and then he came out, and obviously he was tiny, so. And he pissed on me. Still didn't know. <laughs> and he pissed on you. Okay, so where are they going with this? Um, and as he got a little bit older, like to toddler age, he start, he always wore dresses. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people used to say things like, oh, well, he has an older sister, mm -hmm. so that's normal. Wait till he gets to school. Wait till he gets to see other people. And boys. in fairness, we were like, look, we don't have children, so maybe they're right. We had Amelia, but yeah. Yeah, but no, but we didn't. We never we had, had a boy. We had her, you know what I mean? And you were like, maybe you're right. Holy shit, these people don't even, like, when you go to live, do you like, let's talk about this? Or they just like, turn the camera on. They don't give a shit. 
The problem is that these people get to a, these family vloggers, everybody gets to a level where they're just like, well, I got enough fans, I can just talk about whatever I want. They turn F and camera on, like Micah did. And they don't actually have anything to talk about. And then I would be saying, like, oh, I don't know, I was a bit like that as a kid. We didn't know, but we also me. didn't judge. We were like, if he wants to wear a dress, like, who cares? <laughs> right? So, but society judges, that's the problem. So he has just always, I remember a time, I think he probably was about, was he two or three, maybe? Two? Uh, maybe two and a half, and we were in Italy and on holiday, and he really wanted to wear Emilia's um, Rapunzel cover-up. Oh, it was yeah, like a yeah, towel yeah. dress kind of thing, and he wore that it was to breakfast. Yeah, I have a photograph of the two of them sitting yeah, there. Yeah. He- okay, two-year-old. Again, when it comes to identity, like, t- <laughs> my son likes wearing my daughter's dress-up gowns. We're not going to, like... We don't push that. If you let it, like, again, it feels like the, the issue that people are having is that you you push it because it's content. That's the problem. For it to breakfast, and there was some judgment from other people in the hotel. And I remember being really, like, pissed off for him. I was like, what? Like, who cares? Plus, he's a baby. Like, literally, who cares? So, whatever. Exactly. Exactly. And so, who judged you? It's so weird that they're going through all this stuff. Like, I feel like they're just, what's, it, again, the Munchausen thing. With it, with it, usually Munchausen by proxy is something when it, like, here, let me give you the definition of Munchausen by proxy because it's going to help you talk about Munch. Uh, so I just go, I like Reddit. I'm not saying this is the best source for it, but it's, explain it like I'm five is the best place to go get something explained by professionals, actually. are really good at it. Much as by proxy, perpetrators, by contrast, are willing to fulfill their need for positive attention by hurting their own child, thereby assuming the sick role by proxy, right? The kids by proxy. In this case, it's much as by proxy, but it's it's identity issues. So I think that there's going to be something new come out where you're going to see a bunch of parents like much as by proxy, but not uh, hurting their kid or like it's not a sickness it's more of an identity thing right so basically they seek attention and get it by having a sick child and supposedly caring for it as with many other psychological illnesses no one really knows what causes munchausen munchausen syndrome is when people fabricate illnesses to draw attention to themselves so basically that's what i'm trying to say here they're drawing this thing out of eduardo to draw attention to themselves and this is happening a lot when this became the thing when it became more acceptable, but became a hot topic, parents like narcissistic family vloggers will latch onto these things because it by proxy brings them attention. I'm not saying that's what's happening here, but it's, I feel like we can't just say it's not either. Right. I feel like, I mean, based on family vloggers evidence and what they do and what they what they're willing to do to go through and exploit to do it it makes sense that this could be a possibility right we can't say it's not but we also can't say it is but it's got to be in the conversation that was one thing and then he's always just as he got older being interested in dress up um he loves makeup he loves hair let's talk about that for a second we get it a a child uh, my daughter doesn't get to wear she gets to wear chapstick and stuff like that i don't want my kid going on youtube and being influenced by makeup people the amount of makeup some of these people put on and stuff and to completely change their looks to me is is just i don't like it like do it makes you happy always but i'm not going to put my eight-year-old daughter and allow her to put pounds of makeup on her face lipstick and all the stuff i'm not going to let her do that I want my child to be a child first. I don't want them to grow up super fast. Part of me is that a lot of these influencers, like, you know, you got Daniel Cohn, you got Lily, um, and even there's another one called, like, uh, what's her name? Piper. All these people are just, they're adults and they're kids, and their parents allow this. And so part of that is, like, why do you let your kid put 50 pounds of makeup on to look like a 21-year-old? Why is that a thing? That's not an identity thing. That's a bad parenting thing. Let your kids effing be kids. That's my take on that. He just has always loved all of those things. Could it be that it's because you have been vlogging and it's literally your life to look like that? And so that's what he's seen his whole life. He feels like when you get attention, you get paid and all that stuff that he has only seen that. And so that's what he has been exposed to. And so what? Like, why is that a big deal? Right? Because he's a child. Right? Let's not, let's normalize not putting our kids in 10 pounds of makeup and making them look completely different than they are. That's the problem. It's becoming normalized and we don't, most normal people don't want this to be normalized. 
Um, but he knew. The pro- yeah, the problem is Eduardo is um, very aware. Very of, intelligent. Yeah, the mm-hmm. world around him. So I never put any thing on him you never put any pressure on him to change or to like you know be different no you absolutely did put pressure on him your whole life is a vlog your whole life is on camera so maybe you didn't specifically say it to his face but your actions speak louder than words and kids mirror actions as well and behaviors so yeah maybe you didn't say it but you said it the things that we post online we don't just like post anything like we post things but we we He's wearing TikTok tights, so I beg to differ. There's a lot of thought that goes into everything that we post. So before about the age of five or six, around the age of five or six, he would dress up in girls' clothes and take them off for the video. So like he would take them off if we were vlogging, which we don't really vlog that much. It's literally like 15 minutes out of like 24 hours. Now it's even less than that. A lot of family vloggers keep saying this. We only vlog like one hour a day out of the whole 24 hours. Well, minus the 10 hours, your kids are probably sleeping. So that leaves you 14 hours. Then they're at school and you know, so they're at school for let's say eight hours. Okay, cool. So or like say six hours. Okay, so they got four hours left. And out of that four hours, you're vlogging for some of it, so. Don't diminish it by saying it's only 15 minutes out of 24 hours. It's not true. When you go on vacations, you vlog the whole damn thing. When there's something going on, you're vlogging. So I don't like this excuse because it's a bullshit lie. What we probably, what we published was like a bit of a filtered. So what's changed? Why did you guys not allow Eduardo to be who he was if he was that way at five and six? Why now? Question is, if you're, if you were super accepting of it then, then why now? What was the projection? What has changed now that Eduardo says, no, no, now I want to be. What has changed? Because remember, he did that one video. All of a sudden, everything started popping for them. And then it became their main focus. The problem here is it became a main focus. And then he started capitalizing on it. That's the problem. So they're they're What they're doing here is actually kind of like, really? So if this is who he was, why don't you let him be who he was then? It doesn't make any sense. There's there's too many there's too many missing things here. And they're actually admitting guilt almost. So from that moment, he started experimenting with going and at first like you guys never knew this because we never said anything about it. Why didn't you? I mean, I feel like why wait till now? I, I, it bugs me because they say, you know, now f off, don't ask us questions, but if this kid was struggling with his identity from that point onward, why did you keep it quiet then, but now all of a sudden it has to be public for everybody? Um, it was really scary for him. He would question everything. He thought that everybody was looking at him. But little by little, like this was October of last year, and little by little, he just kept building up confidence. He ended up going to water parks with a girl swimsuit. Mm-hmm. And the transformation has been incredible, but what also transformed was how he wanted to project himself mm-hmm. to the world. So. This is my argument, though, is that it's not that he did this. It's that this is when everything started popping for the Sakona Jolies in a way that their channel was kind of going down. Nobody's really watching them. This kind of popped. Right. We can't ignore that. That is when the projection started being like, OK, here's my argument. Is that when Eduardo finally did the thing. Right. And then they got the attention from it. That means that Eduardo then started getting the attention from his parents. Now, let's not be, let's not forget that family vloggers are terrible parents generally, right? They focus on themselves, they're narcissistic. And so when a child who likely has grown up in the shadows of their own parents finally starts getting attention, positive attention from something, right? That kid's going to be like, oh, I've hit on this parent algorithm, this thing that works. I've done this thing and it gets me honorable. It gets me more attention from my parents. It seems that they love me more. They're spending more time with me. And so I'm going to continue to do that thing. That is the projection. That is what that is literally influencing. So if you're saying, Eduardo, we love you more now, even though you're not saying the words, we love you more now. But if your actions say that Eduardo is going to use that as positive reinforcement to say, well, I'm going to keep doing this because that gets me the love that gets me the one-on-one attention I want. That gets my parents talking to me more. I'm getting closer to them. I'm not saying that's the case. Okay. But I'm saying that has to be in the conversation. And that's when it comes to this type of conversation, that's why I'm so careful with this, because I'm not saying that's the way it is. But I feel like when it comes to narcissistic parents and vlogging, 
these like what was it remember remember we did the one about not enough nelson she was going out with her parents to talk about sex and she didn't know that but she was so freaking excited to go talk to her parents because they don't spend any time with her and that to me broke my heart and ever since i thought about that every time there's something that comes about like this i feel like they started paying more attention to him and so that gave him more confidence to do it more or it said well this worked and unconsciously he just kept doing it because that's what worked it's it's a question. He would say things like, put me on camera, I don't care. Or like, I want to take a picture in this dress. I want that's when, to That's go. when he started, because if you guys have been following me from the TikTok from the beginning, okay, which is, I know I have 2 million followers and I only, I only joined TikTok a year ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But in that time, it's like all like it's me, because it was like me and Amelia. Actually, my first TikTok was with Eduardo. <laughs> but nearly all Mine my- Mine was as well, I think. Yeah, nearly all of my TikToks were something that- do I need to say any more? Yeah. Your shit grew because of Eduardo on TikTok. And then this started hitting. Again, it cannot be ignored or denied that something was happening with Eduardo and you were, you were focusing on him and he was getting all this positive reinforcement and attention from the parents he loves that likely didn't spend too much time with him before, you know, because his story didn't really matter until it started helping you. Yeah, he would show up to his, um, like, online classes with sometimes with makeup on sometimes with hair like with wigs take all the transgender stuff aside the identity issues aside let's normalize again not putting makeup on our eight seven year olds or how old this kid is no let's not do that let's let's let our kids be kids i i i'm adamantly gonna stand on that stop letting children put makeup on What's the point? Makeup is made. It's meant to make you look sexier. It's meant to make you look different than you are. Makeup is not an empowering thing. Makeup, well, it can be an empowering thing to women. Um, it does. It definitely transforms people. But like, let's let's the kids be kids because that's a projection. That why do they need makeup? Because they need to change who they look. What they look like. Let's tell our kids you're beautiful who you are. Let's be real. Let's just keep that raw. Let's let our kids just be kids for a little while. Let's normalize that. I don't care what anybody says about that. You can come at me all day long about that. But let's let our kids just be themselves and not to put makeup on. Makeup should never be a thing that says, I feel like myself when I put makeup on, right? If that's the way that society projects it to people, and it really does. I don't feel myself unless I can put, you know, like Kendall Rich and I put tons of fillers in my lips. I don't feel myself unless I can get a boob job. I don't feel myself. That is a societal thing. And I'm not blaming the people who do it. I'm blaming society for making that normal where you don't actually feel yourself unless you completely transform yourself. That says a lot about who we are and where we've come, right? And that's, and everybody's, I'm guilty of it. Everybody's guilty of it. I feel my, I feel better when I look really good and I go into public and I'm, I, I dress fresh because I get more attention or, you know, I have, you know, I, I want to get hair plugs because I'm going bald, right? I get that. I'm, I'm part of that too. But I'm like, for our children, we got to be really, really careful because that will just continue on as they get older. If they think that that's how they got the attention, then they're going to just next, 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 next. Like just experiment. And it was really cool because he got to do it in that, like he got to take it in his own time. Mm. And then when it came to going to school, he was like, okay, well, I don't want to be two different people. Mm. I want to be Eduardo who I am at home and who I've been for the last year on the outside as well. And on Instagram, on TikTok. And so that's why he made the decision to start wearing the girl's uniform. We can't also ignore the fact that like literally it's like who he wants to be on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and all stuff like this shouldn't even be part of a kid's vocabulary. Who do you want to be on the internet? It should be, you shouldn't be on the internet. That's what it should be. Nobody talks about that anymore. Well, I do, but that's, they just keep over, just keep overlooking that whole part. This kid is living his life out on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. He does wear the boys one sometimes when it's too cold. Though, yeah, so he's, not, he's like, how do you, it's too cold wearing a skirt. But, um, I just, I feel like there's a misconception about, you know, putting your child online or like putting him out there or like that it's exploitation or anything like that. It's purely, from my point of view, led by him. No, sorry. You're the parents. You're the parents. So no. Like we are following his lead. Also, no. You do not follow your child's lead, everybody. Don't take their advice on parenting. You don't follow your child's lead. The child doesn't lead. The parent leads. I parent. I teach my children. We don't follow our kids' lead. 
I mean, to a degree, there are certain little things you give your kids leeway to explore and discover for sure, but you don't follow their lead. You take the lead. That's the problem with where we are as a culture. We have let kids take the lead while parents sit in the back and, oh, do whatever you want. I'll help you. No, 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 no. Let's get back to, you know, making it normal for parents to take the lead because what she just said there is dumb. Kids. If you let them do whatever they want, they will destroy their self, themselves, okay? If you let them eat whatever they want, do whatever, get as much tablet time as whatever they want, or do whatever they want, kids cannot make decisions that are healthy for them because they don't have cognitive dissonance about what could happen, what the outcome will be, and that's why consent cannot happen from children either. So that was dumb advice. Don't take that, please every way and for those that will say things like well he's not old enough to give consent well he is right now like no he's not no just because you're saying the words doesn't make it true ask any psych child psychologist doctor clinical psychologist if a child can give informed consent about what they're doing to this child maybe you'll find one that's a little bit kooky but for the most part i think the, the average doctor who's not wrapped up in identity politics will say, no, a child cannot give informed consent about crazy decisions like this about their future. Cannot. For right now, he is. Obviously, in the future, he might change his mind. But for right now, he is. A she just proved my point. So right now, he's giving me consent. But in the future, he might be saying, why did you let me do that? Because that's called informed consent. He cannot give that. So she says, well, maybe he'll change his mind later. That's because right now, he cannot understand the future. And that's why it cannot be consensual. That's why it's not consent. Thanks for proving me right, though, whatever your name is. I really don't see the difference between showing him the way he is and showing Amelia, Alessia, Andrea for who they are. Mm -hmm. Because they how come... Know Alessia and Andrea are. So no, but how, how, can, how come people, like, for example... So if it's not worth... <laughs> the logic here. Okay, think about her logic. Like... Him being dresses in dresses and makeup, it's just like the other girls. So what's the problem? Well, you did a 30-minute video about it. If it really shouldn't have attention drawn to it, or why are we even talking about it? Why are you talking about it? Again, right? It's, like, it's just like that. Well, it's not just like that, because your whole TikTok and everything is exploded on this stuff. It's not just that, and you know it. And to say that is a cop-out, and that's, that's very disingenuous. And I don't like that argument, because you just made my argument for me. Okay, I put up a picture of Amelia and me together the day that we did a makeup tutorial oh, yeah, yeah, on yeah, all yeah. of them. And it got... Stop doing makeup tutorials on your children. Like, that shouldn't even be a thing. That's not... Don't normalize that. Zero hate. Zero. I put up the same picture of Eduardo wearing the same exact makeup because I pretty much did the same makeup on all of them and flooded with opinions. Opinions. She now she's now she's construing hate and opinions together. Opinions. Now people are just saying, like, because it's out of the. Here's the problem, everybody. Regardless of what you think about transgender ideology, it's out of the norm. And maybe they're trying to normalize it and do whatever. And but in this in this where we are as a people right now, where we are sitting, 2021, talking about transgender ideology, it is still outside the norm. And maybe in 10 years it'll be normal, or maybe it won't be. But that's why. And so, and they've capitalized on this thing. It is outside the norm of what we have experienced for the last eons <laughs> since, you know, up until this point in the last 30 years, it's not really been a thing. It's not really been an issue until the last 30 years. And now it's a big issue, right? It's a big issue and for right or wrong, whatever you believe about it, but it's not normal because that's what society has deemed not normal up until the point. And it still isn't. It is still very, very, very divided. And those who say, will call me a transform for saying that it's divided. It's divided because it's divided. So, and she's just saying, I got a ton of opinions and hate. And I purposefully did Amelia's one on my feed and his one on stories because I knew that people would, there would be like toxic. Is Again, I did it knowing he's going to get hate. So I made it so we can't get hate. So just don't put it out there. Your children can... Again, you're so disheartening to, under, to understand what she's saying right now is that she knew Eduardo was going to get a ton of hate and yet she still did it. If you know your child's going to get a ton of hate for something that you're projecting onto them, that's your fault, not your child's fault. And it's people should be commenting on that anyway. But you still did it and you changed the way you did something because you knew you're going to get hate. So why don't you just not do the thing?
Why don't you just let your kid be a kid? You can still do the makeup stuff at home. You don't have to film it. You don't take pictures and put it on the internet. You can still do it. But if you know they're going to get hate, why would you put that out there as a target of hate? Where, this is where, right? What we were saying right at the beginning, which I don't know if you're here for video, but where Anna being the people pleaser and me just not giving a <laughs> you know? So for me, it's like I grew up like Eduardo and Eduardo is going the route of freedom of expression and I went through the route of suppression yeah. of expression. So he's he is admitting here he went through suppression of his expression. So he he was well, he's admitting that he had identity issues. OK, now, not to say that he still doesn't, but look what happened. He suppressed it, not saying that's a good thing, but went on to become a quote unquote normal human man that had a wife and children and then became a narcissistic family vlogger. But again, if, if his parents were to allow him to express or whatever the case may be when he was younger, is he saying right now he wouldn't be where he was? He wouldn't have a wife and kids, right? So we have, that has to be taken into consideration too. This is a very, very deep and crazy conversation. That's like, like this has ramifications for what we're talking about now. And that affected my entire life. So I have more of an opinion of like, oh, you don't like pictures of Eduardo? Well, here's 50 of them. Yeah, great. That's great. You don't like, you know, you. it's not that they don't like pictures of Eduardo. Again, th th this is the thing. They think that people are hating on Eduardo. Nobody's hating on Eduardo. I don't think so. Maybe there are a bunch of douchebags out there because the internet's full of douchebags. But they're not hating on Eduardo. From what I've seen and what I'm noticing is that people are hating on you guys for not letting Eduardo live this in private. Right. Even in your community, it's fine, but you're putting it out there for the entire world to see for your own benefit. That's the overall consensus here. And so he's like, OK, well, you hate him and you're going to target him with abuse. So I'm going to give you way more things to abuse him on. So he can, when he gets older and sees this, then he's going to see all this stuff. Right. A protective parent who sees this is not going to put this out for the Internet. So when he gets older, he sees it. They're going to say, look, we love you as you are. And the most influential thing a kid can have is his parents. Right. So if you're influencing to say your identity is your identity, and we love you no matter what. And if you love dresses, that's awesome. It's amazing. But if you also put that on the Internet for people to judge and all this stuff, then you're that's wrong. I'm sorry. And I know you, people are going to say, well, you can't help what people are going to say about this stuff. You can't. But you can help the content you put out there by not making him a target. Right. And it's not that I don't think he's the target. Again, I think you're the target. That's why, you know, and I'm like, yeah. Here's a, oh, you, you a problem with that TikTok? Here's 50 more. Here's even better ones because it just and you know it's like i'm not going to but that's your right though that's your right i, don't, I just don't believe that. everybody has the right to do whatever it's like they you're want. supposed to yeah except exploit people you don't have the right to exploit. And again, the, the laws and rules are going to change about this. We know this is coming. Our family vloggers know this is coming. The laws are going to catch up eventually, and exploitation is going to be against the law. Online exploitation of children will eventually be against the law. And so, yeah, you don't have the right to exploit somebody without informed consent. Hi, you're it's not a lot, hurting anybody. It is a lot see. easier if you conform in this world. It's not hurting anybody. Again, when Eduardo becomes older regardless of what his ideology will be, he'll, he'll, he will always have to look back on this and he will see the comments and hate that you guys expose him to. And I'm not saying that the comments and hate are justified. They are not justified, but he will see it. And you guys decided to put that out there when you did not have to. Oh, it's way easier yeah, to live because I've lived both of them. <laughs> it ruffles so many feathers, but that's my point that I'm making mm. is that I posted a picture of Amelia and it was fine. And I posted the same picture of Eduardo and it yeah. ruffled so many feathers. And that's just not okay. Like, Eduardo, if anything, enjoys makeup maybe even more than Amelia. And, I mean, they both do. They do it for play. It's like play. Um, but you're making it his identity, so it's not play. And you're telling the world right now, it's not play. It's his identity. And you should never have your kid, again, take away the, 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 the identity issues. Makeup play, okay, for costumes, sure, maybe a little bit. But at the same time, you're not make you're saying this is if it's just play, just say, hey, we're just playing. But you everybody knows you guys aren't just playing. That's the problem. If it was just one off or just having fun, you're making this his identity. You guys are projecting this onto him. He clearly doesn't wear makeup, you know, in his day to day. The whole, life. the whole thing is just so stupid. What's the difference between shorts and a skirt? Like true. Why why when you go to school in the morning? Or, yeah. and I see all the girls and boys walking and the boys wearing trousers and the girls wearing skirts. Who came up 
what, like, what, what even is that? I know. Like, That's just the way the society's been. I just want to let you, to make you guys aware that the younger generation, like our children's generation, yeah, Gen is so much kinder yeah. and open-minded, uh, more open-minded than we ever were because he really has not had a hard time. Like, as in his peers have been fine. Yeah. He's had maybe one or two comments and then they apologize and that's it. Like, it's not a big like, deal. Yeah. It's really not. So the problem a lot of the time is the adults that like, you know, leave comments or have an opinion, even though they might not have children themselves. This is a good point that she's made. I don't want to overlook it because sometimes it's very rare when these people make a good point. I like her point here, to be honest with you, when it comes to this gender uh, identity stuff. Um, really good point is that kids are, and she's right, way more understanding. Teachers are teaching kids to be way more understanding. It is true. And sometimes I argue that in the future, what's this going to look like? Right. Are we going to completely capitulate to this and be like a genderless society? I hope not. I think that there's value in gender roles. I think there's value in sex based rights and all that kind of stuff. But um, at the same time, she's right. And I don't want to overlook that. And so that can't always be the argument. But again, we don't know the future and we want to make sure that it's a kid's choice to be able to do what they want. But don't put it on the Internet for everybody to see because they do not have the consent. Right? It's just the consent thing. It's always been the consent thing. So you're saying that I should hide Eduardo away in a little box mm. because he's just like, not okay. Like, no, I want to celebrate him. And so long as he's comfortable with it at seven years old. What no. Again, my argument has always been, and I think that's what people are starting to come to, to terms with, is that informed consent, no kids should be on, regardless of gender identity or what they how they express themselves. That's the problem here, Anna. You're missing that part of it. He is aware that like, you know, this is social media. This is, I mean, he has better awareness, I think, than some people, like adults online. He's seven. Sorry. I mean, you can project that and you can say that, but say he's seven. He's still a seven year old child. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's just, it's crazy. Like it, it's all late, it's all led by him. We're following like what he wants to do. We're following his wishes. Just wait and, another like 10 years and read his autobiography, yeah. Growing Up Online by Emilia and Eduardo. Yeah, let's wait 10 years to see what kind of damage you've done to him. Let's wait. This is the problem. We don't want to wait. We don't want to wait until kids get too old to, to regret it. There's already, look at Alison Stoner. There's another family, uh, there's a lady come out that talked about her mom who was a blogger. There's already so many kids who regret that they had to live through this. Don't, I don't want to wait. That's why I talk about this. I don't want to wait 10 years to see what kind of damage these people have created in their children. That's crazy. Let's not do that. Okay. Let's make it not okay now. Surely, surely. It's going to be a bestseller. I can tell. Well. I just feel like um, the whole thing is so unnecessarily blown out of proportion. Mm. And, and yet here you are doing a 30 minute video about it. To me, all, the f all four of our children are the same. Yeah. Like but who knows people. what's coming? I don't know why Alessi and Andrea are gonna, what they're gonna throw at us, you know what I mean? None of us know, like none, even, none of us know. Um, Can we just normalize not wearing tights as a guy? Let's just, <laughs> please. Like, I don't need to know your religion. I just, I can ask you, hey, what religion are you? Just saying. There are things there's like, okay, hey, when you see an old man at the beach wearing a, you know, a budgie smuggler, you're like, really? If it makes you happy, I guess. Like I, part of me is like, oh, I shouldn't have to address it. But then another part of me understands. Um, and yeah, like as in, in a few years, like Jonathan said, ask Eduardo <laughs> for himself. I think it'd be Eduardo. Yeah. Ask him a few years how angry he is that you put his entire life out there without his consent. That'd be great. Well, and again, don't forget that narcissistic, like I asked this question yesterday. It was, a, it was a really good question. A lot of people were asking. How many people who grew up with narcissistic parents who are all about themselves literally like every family vlogger have good relationships with their parents. Right. I think uh, I, I did make a mistake a while ago and I always, I said, look, people, narcissists raise narcissists, which is sort of true. Um, but at the same time, I feel like most kids, when they start becoming in their own identity, start realizing they don't like that about their parents. And they, a lot of kids will shift away from that. And so the question again remains, how many people have good relationships with parents who have narcissistic personality disorders? Very, 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 very few. 
because that's it's a disorder. I mean, I'm, I, every time these guys do a video together, I can sit down and just tear it to shreds every single time because in the end, it's not really about Eduardo. Okay. It's, it's, it's about them and what they do for their life. Eduardo just became an algorithm bump for them. That to me is not, that's not, that's not a flex. You know what a good flex is, man. We spent time together. We've developed bonds. My kids and I have a really good relationship and that's the most important thing. They didn't have to, you know, find something that hit for our channel in order for us to love them. That's it. That's, I mean, that's the show. Weird. These people are weird. I get bad vibes, really bad vibes off them. And I think a lot of people do too. And some people can't voice those vibes. They don't understand why they get bad vibes. But in the end, in the end, inherently, if you exploit children, that's the vibes you give out. And nobody likes, nobody likes to see people get taken advantage of. Like regular people don't. Narcissists maybe, and people who are crazy. But most people don't like to see other people get taken advantage of. And that is exactly what's happening in family vlog culture. Kids are being exploited without their consent. The end. Take a breath. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and all the other places because that's how my voice grows. These people, ugh. But you, you're amazing, incredible, valuable. And I hope that you, you know that your identity isn't wrapped up in what the world thinks it is. And that's what these people think. They think, well, your identity should be wrapped. And that's one point that they get right is that it shouldn't be, it should not matter what the rest of the world thinks of you. You should understand and be happy with who you are. But it shouldn't be pressured from the outside to be who you want to be. You are incredible, valuable, lovely, brilliant. And you are my therapy. And I will see you tomorrow.